I think you gotta give, um, gotta give um, Roy's team a lot of credit. I thought they had more pop. I thought they had more energy. They were livelier. I thought they had, what, what, what our players say, a little more juice than, than I thought our kids did. You know, sometimes uh, when you're playing three games in seven days, three games on the road, it, it, I, it was my worst fear was realize. I just thought that they, we got to be a better team that had more energy, that executed their system better. And you guys, you got you guys give them credit where credit is due. I'm not real sure had we not played three games in a row on the road, even if we've been at our best. I think Carolina's playing at a very high level. Uh, I think they executed extremely well defensively. I thought they bossed us up. I thought we had really good looks uh, in the second half. And we've had three or four games this year where it just seemed like the ball just wasn't going to go in the basket. And I think uh, a lot of it was their defensive schemes that, that maybe took us out of uh, some of the stuff we let normally get around the basket for our big guys. And I thought a little bit of it was that we just we weren't on point today. We got to have a quick recovery. Uh, we have four more games left. So thank goodness it, it equals itself out. We have three games at home. Hopefully we can recover. But uh, we just got beat by a team that was a, little, a lot better than us today. Execute a lot better. And, uh, you got to give them credit for being on point. They they seem to be uh, playing at a very high level here toward the end of the year. And I guess one thing that I can can take away, I I, I haven't felt that we anywhere close to reaching our potential yet. And hopefully that's a good thing that if we get back and regroup, that we can finish very strong. And then how how much of a boost does this team get when I see a little plays the way he did today? Yeah. Well, and, uh, when, when I was at the University of Kentucky. North Carolina was my game preparation. I was there for 12 years. I played Carolina this Sunday. And, um, and that's a long time ago. And they've always been good. They've always had players like Little. I mean, he's more of the second. Uh, he's, he, he falls right into the category with some of the great players, potential guys that come in as freshmen. And, and he's showing more and more now toward the end of the year that you know, why people think that he's one of, he's one of the top players in the country coming out of high school. And uh, I wasn't surprised at all uh, that, uh, that, uh, he, that he played as well as he's capable of playing. Uh, we kind of expected that, to be real honest with you. Uh, he's an outstanding kid. He's a, I know him very well. He has high character. He's, he's loaded with talent. And, and he's uh, playing with a lot of maturity for a freshman. And I think that he's he's going to be an added boost for them uh, once they get into the NCAA tournament. Uh, he's athletic, he's strong, and right now he's playing with a lot of points. I thought the night he was extremely aggressive, especially in the first half. And um, even though the game was kind of back and forth, he kind of gave an opportunity. He made some 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 really athletic plays that only a guy with his uh, physical skills could do. Scouting North Carolina and now watching the play, who do you think? At least on that end of the floor, the offensive end presents the biggest mismatch. Well, well, well see, that's, that maybe is a question that maybe you're interested in. They have a system. And every night they play, someone else, because they execute their system, it depends on who they're playing, other guys will have opportunities to, uh, to, to have a more of a positive input that particular night. I, I think that's the good thing about uh, Roy's team that I think they execute very well. You know, I think they, they move the ball, they do it, the Carolina way. And so when you execute and moving the ball, the, the offense finds you. Now they're talented. And so each game is going to present a different opportunity in relation to who, who's defending them. And that's, that's the way they've won games uh, for 20 or 30 years. And uh, I'm not real sure one particular player you can you can key in on because it's their system that I think that, that works and the guys have bought into it. Uh, they execute it very well. When you have talented players bought into a system, that, that that's, spells a little challenge for the business team. You talked quite a bit about this year, Little. What have you seen from Cam Johnson, especially the way he's played the last four games? Well, the, the thing about Cam, he's who he is. He's a tremendous shooter. He's six nine. It's very it's, it, it's a challenge for anyone to be uh, the guard him because he's mobile. He plays inside, outside. He's smart. He had to make good decisions. He has a high IQ, and uh, he, he fits into that system very well. Because if you if you leave him, if you give him a little bit of room, he'll knock down the jump shot, and then he's athletic enough 
to drive to the basket. They're a good basketball team with, with a chance to, to win the whole thing. Coach, obviously it's never good to lose a game, but how does this loss kind of, what are the positives you can take out of it so that the team refocuses with four games left rather than losing in the postseason? Well, you know, you, you take the, pos the positive thing is that this is one game and, and we're going to regroup. You know, we, we've lost, I, I didn't expect us to go undefeated during the year and very few teams will. Uh, the positive thing is that I think my guys are mature enough. We evaluate our the positives and we don't evaluate the negatives and we'll regroup. Uh, we don't have time to, uh, this, this bunch is, is mature enough that we don't allow ourselves, to, early on in the season, I thought losses, uh, we had the loss against Duke and I thought it took a lot out of I think that helped us be who we are now because we, we kind of went on the road there in two games, well one day turned around and I didn't think we performed very well. But now I think we've grown and matured enough that we'll bounce back from this that we have a short turnaround on Monday and we regroup and realize the big picture that we still have a lot to play for. And if we just stay positive and continue to keep you know, with the mindset that we've had the last eight games, uh, then I think we'll recover and we'll be fine. Coach, obviously you guys are a tall team, but you were rebound, out rebounded 47 to 32 tonight. What kind of happened on the boards? Well, I think what you have to do is give uh, uh, Carolina a lot of credit. They wanted to, they've always been the, the, one of the top leading rebounding teams in the nation. This is not anything new. They're, they're good athletes, they're smart, they're well coached. And uh, uh, just because we're taller than this, it doesn't mean that we are better rebounders. You got to give them credit. They outplay this guy. And you got to give them credit. I think they're going to outplay a lot of people you know, over the years. Uh, they, very few people have come in here and won very many games. That's a credit to their program, their, their tradition, the culture that they developed here. Did you, during the eight-game win streak, did you see anything other than maturity and willingness to respond to adversity from this team? I just think that I, I saw a lot of positive things tonight. You know that they were focused, they kept executing, they defended well, they had their body language was good. And every time we made a mistake, they made us play. Sixteen points for David Nichols tonight. Tell me a little bit about his performance coming off the bench. Well, David's been pretty consistent all year. You know, he's a graduate student. Uh, he's a very smart youngster. Very hard nosed and tough, extremely confident. Uh, he's very bright. He graduated from the University of Albany in three years, a 3.9 grade point average, and he's going to graduate with his master's degree this summer. So he's he's matured, he's capable, and he he he's one of our leaders on the team. And so he's been very consistent all year long, and he's a great addition to our program. Did you have any family here today? Oh yeah, I had a few. My I had a couple of brothers here and sister-in-law. Uh, all the rest of them were uh, watching probably on TV, screaming and hollering at the referees. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, 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 I grew up an ACC fan and uh, growing up in Gastonia. And uh, I've always had a tremendous respect for all the, the programs in the state. But, but Carolina has, has been a flagship program, Carolina. And uh, I think Roy's done a tremendous job. And the, the day we just got beat by a better team. Were you much growing up? Were you the person hollering at the television watching ACC basketball? I watched uh, every time I had a chance. I was watching mostly in black and white. <laughs> I was watching the games in black and white. <laughs> you know, with the rabbit, with the rabbit ears. <laughs> so you only had three channels. There you go. <laughs> and I was always uh, interested in, in, in watching. I remember uh, uh, Bones McKinney and Big Ubers. All those guys back in the day, uh, Jack Barron, Coach Charlie Scott, and the whole group. Uh, it was uh, always fun uh, watching them play on TV. I remember um, one day in the newspaper that Eddie Biedenbach had, had um, wore out maybe about 20 pairs of shoes, and they had a picture of him sitting at the jump circle, and all the shoes that he had worn out spread out on the floor <laughs> by, behind it. And uh, you know, David Thompson was from Shelby, right down the road from where I was living. <clears throat> During that era, you had not only did you have ACC basketball, but you had uh, Henry Logan at Western Carolina. You had uh, uh, Devin Durant, I believe his name from Catawba. If you go back and look, those two guys averaged almost 30 points apiece. So they had great teams at High Point, Guilford, Catawba, Western Carolina, and the ACC. So. I, was, I, was, I enjoyed getting the, the morning paper every day and keeping 
up with all the good basketball that was going on in the state. So I'm a, I'm a fan of the ACC, and I'm, I feel privileged and honored to, to have had an opportunity to, to coach uh, against so many great programs. And uh, what we got to go back now is regroup and bounce back. And we, we still have a lot to play for. And I think you haven't heard the last of the Seminole. All right. Thank you all very much.